Let's talk about combinational logic circuits. So we're going to consider circuits called logic gates, which combine several logic variable inputs to produce a logic variable output. We're going to focus on the external behavior of the logic gates, ignoring, for now, how they are implemented. Combinational logic is memoryless, since its output at a given instant of time depends solely on its inputs at that same instant. In contrast, logic circuits that exhibit memory, or sequential logic, have values whose current state depends on both current and previous inputs. Now we're not going to talk about sequential logic now, but um, the bigger picture is that there is combinational and sequential logic, and those are the two main categories. And so what we will start building on uh, certainly for now is just combinational logic and we will start with the um, fundamental logic gates, the canonic gates, which are these. We have an AND gate, OR gate, and an invert. All logic functions can be implemented with these three logic functions. And we can represent each of these logic gates uh, with in three ways we can, we can uh, uh, draw or write out a truth table, we can write out an expression, and we can show a symbol. So in the truth table, what we have on the left side are the inputs. We have two inputs, A and B. They are binary values, so they can only be 0 or 1. Because there are two digits, we have two to the two, or four permutations. We have four unique words that we can form with these two inputs. The output is on the right, and it is equal to, in this case, an AND gate. It's when A and B are true. So you see that they're only both true when uh, A is one and B is one. When we write that as an expression, we will uh, we will actually use the multiplication. I don't know why this does not show the dot symbol. Usually we'll put a dot between the A and the B to show a product, but that stands for um, the AND. Also, you'll have the, um, uh, the upside down U, uh, like the archway that, that mathematicians will use to show, uh, represent the AND operation. The symbol for the AND gate has a flat backside and a curved front side. Now, in contrast, we have the OR gate. Here, the output is equal to, uh, when it is true whenever either A or B, or both A and B, are true. So the only time that it is false is when both inputs are false. We use the plus symbol for the OR operator, and you can also use U for union to represent the, uh, the OR operation. And the symbol here has a con cave backside and a pointy front side. And then lastly we have the uh, the not function or the inverter function which is just one input A and it outputs the the inverted logic. So you put in a 0 you get a 1, put in a 1 you get a 0 and we use the bar over the uh, over any uh, boolean expression and that inverts it. The schematic is a triangle with a circle at the output. And actually, the circle, or we'll call it a bubble, is really the symbol that indicates that it's an inversion. Now, besides the canonic gates of AND, OR, and NOT, there are several derived gates that are uh, used enough that they get their own symbol and their own name. So uh, what you notice here, first the top left, is what's called a NOR gate. It's nothing more than an OR gate with an inversion bubble at the end. It's like taking an OR gate and then adding an invert function at the output. And so in the truth table, you'll see that uh, like the OR gate, the only time, the only unique value in the output is when both inputs are 0, right? But instead of being a 0, the output is 1 when both are 0. The NAND gate is just an AND gate with a bubble and invert following it. And then we have two uh, more sophisticated gates, the XOR, which is the exclusive OR, 
and then the XNOR is simply an exclusive OR with a NOT at the output. And here, it's uh, it, the, the function uh, is, as the name designates, exclusive OR means that the output is going to be true only when either A is true or B is true, but not when both A and B are true. A regular OR gate would have a true output when both A and B were uh, were true. Here, uh, the output's low. If we look at the XNOR, what we see is that the only time the output is true is when both A and B are low or both A and B are high. And this is very useful when you are trying to compare two binary values. You can imagine if you had, let's say, an 8-bit binary number and you had two of these numbers and you were trying to compare and check do these numbers equal each other well you could have and uh, here we have a and b let's say that we had a0 a1 a2 through a7 that would correspond to the eight bits of number a and then we would have b0 through b7 that would be the eight bits of number b and if we had an exclusive or for each place value the ones the twos the fours the eights and so forth we could we could bring in a0 and b0 and compare them a1, B1, compare them, and so forth. Then if you take all of those outputs of the XNOR and you AND them together, then if all outputs are, are true, then the output of the big massive AND gate that would have eight inputs to it would be true. And when that's true, you would be informed or that the number A and the number B, the two eight-digit binary values, were equal to each other.